Tara Sanders, former White House press secretary and author of a great book. It's called Speaking for Myself. Sarah, good morning to you. Good morning. Okay, and there's the book right there. Um, so Griff was talking about these lawsuits that the campaign is filing across the country because they want to make sure that all of the votes that are counted are legitimate votes. Uh, but Rudy said yesterday he announced that they were taking legal action to stop rampant corruption that is happening across the country. Any idea what he's talking about? I, I'm not sure on specifics that Rudy's talking about, but I do know that the campaign wants to make sure that every vote that is counted is a legal vote. Um, and I think that we have a responsibility to do that. We want to make sure we have transparency in the process and that every person that showed up to vote, that those votes are counted. I think the campaign is right uh, to pursue that. This race is too close not to make sure that everything is done uh, correctly. And I think that's what they're trying to, to push for uh, in these you know, last 24 hours and in the days moving forward. Yep. States that are still up for grabs, Nevada, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Georgia, Alaska. And if you look at uh, buildbackbetter.com, Joe Biden already has a website put together. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it says Biden-Harris transition. And the only thing, it has a picture of him. And the only thing it says is the American people will determine who will serve as the next president of the United States. Votes are still being counted in several states around the country. The cry, <coughs> excuse me, the crisis facing the country are severe from a pandemic to an economic recession, climate change to radical injustice, and the transition team will continue preparing at full speed so that the Biden Harris administration can hit the ground running uh, on day one. Too soon for that, you think? What are your thoughts about what's happening right now? I definitely think it's too soon because the election hasn't been called. Uh, there are still too many states out there that are too close for them to make a determination. I would actually add Arizona to that list. I think it um, is a pathway for the president. Arizona and Pennsylvania, I think, are key for the president. And those are both places uh, where he still has a path to victory. And so um, I, I think it is incredibly too early for them to make that type of announcement um, because we've still got votes left to be counted and, and I think that has to be completed before um, we can determine who the winner is of this race. And, and believe me, Joe Biden would be fighting in the same way in the same in this, with just different lawyers for the same thing, especially last night. Arizona, <laughs> uh, which we call, they closed the gap. I think uh, it seems that Donald Trump picked up 11,000 votes last night. So we're going to see what happens and you have a recount that could be underway uh, in Wisconsin because that is so close. On, uh, your, your thoughts on what I just said? If you could pass if you want. Uh, certainly, I think Joe Biden's team would absolutely be doing the same thing. Let's not forget that when Donald Trump won in 2016, they spent months, um, actually years, questioning his actual um, victory in his election. Four years, to be exact. I don't think they ever accepted the results of the 2016 election. One thing is clear is that this race has not been completed in terms of a final winner. They've got to make sure they count every ballot. The other thing that I think is one of the big stories of Election Day that hasn't been talked about a lot is how Donald Trump is the person that actually expanded the Republican base. He's the one that brought in a new voting demographic for Republicans, working class, whites, blacks, Hispanics. He has done uh, historically better with all three of those groups. I think that is a huge story of the night, and he will continue to be a force in American politics no matter what happens. He's still the leader of this party. Um, and I, I think he still has a strong pathway, particularly through Arizona and Pennsylvania, to be reelected for four more years. You know, it's interesting. Over the last uh, 48 hours or so, Sarah, we've learned so much about different states' election laws because every state's got different rules because they're passed by the legislature. And one of the things that has upset a number of people uh, who voted for Donald Trump and the Trump team itself is the fact that the laws in Pennsylvania were the laws as written until last Friday when the Supreme Court in Pennsylvania said, you know what, you don't need to have a positive ID if you're going to drop off uh, something into one of those uh, drop boxes. You know what, we're also going to change the legislature's law where uh, you've got to have the ballots in by election day. We're going we're gonna to take them till Friday. And, you know, all sorts of things like that. So I can understand the problems with it, but at the same time, we've never been in a pandemic before. There's certainly some unprecedented challenges. I think you also have to 
keep in mind um, who's in charge of the counting in Pennsylvania, who's in charge of this process. And it's someone who is unapologetically a hater of Donald Trump and has posted many times uh, publicly on social media just how much they the dislike General. this president. Um, and I think that that does create a problem uh, for Pennsylvania. I think that's another reason that we have to have transparency in this process. We have to make sure that there are members of both campaigns that get to be part of and make sure that each ballot that is counted is a legal vote and should be uh, mm -hmm. actually added to the final tally. I think it's very important that we do have that transparency, particularly in Pennsylvania. You know, it seems our country is so divided and a lot of people were looking forward to the election being over so we can try to come together as a country. The gap actually posted this picture of a sweatshirt. One side was red, one side was blue, zips up, and it says basically we can all be together. The tweet said, the one thing we know is that together we can move forward. But then they decided to take it down, and this was the statement they, they said. They got a lot of blowback. Exactly. Uh, it was just too soon for this message. We remain optimistic that our country can come together to drive positive change for all. Maybe it was too soon, but this is just a sign that the cancel culture not going away. If you don't agree with us, we don't like your opinion, then we don't want to hear it. Uh, you know, I think that's uh, incredibly sad. I don't think there's ever a bad time for our country to come together. Uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't certainly political divisions. I think that they most certainly exist, and we've seen that uh, a lot over the last several months. But there's no time when it's not a good thing for the American people to come together, to work together. Mm -hmm. I think that should be happening now. Let's work together, get a uh, final tally on this race. Obviously, I hope that it is in favor of President Trump. Um, but at the end of the day, we are all Americans, and I don't think that there's ever a bad time. But I think it's a shame that they are so unwilling and so cowardly to actually stand up for a positive message. I think right. that just goes to show you how dangerous and how bad cancel culture is in America. Right. By the way, the gap, when you used to be able to shop in New York City, was right across the street. Uh, but they thought it would be a better idea to, to, to keep everyone unemployed. Uh, this is not actually a sweatshirt. Uh, this is just an idea of coming together. They thought it would be good for the brand. And maybe the blowback isn't that bad, because what's wrong with having people come together, essentially? Uh, the other thing, real quick, uh, CNN's reporting the president's in a dark mood since then and kind of knows he lost. Would you describe that the same way? Well, I don't... I, I don't think that's accurate. Uh, the, he certainly hasn't lost. I, I think we have to make sure these votes are counted. There's still very much a pathway for the president. Um, and I think he and his team have to continue fighting uh, and make sure they get, again, a final tally here right. in this process. I think he's very much still alive. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll have to see what happens over the next few days. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we'll get resolution in the next few days. Right. For sure. I, I think people know him. Uh, he's a fighter to the end. Uh, thanks so much. I uh, appreciate it, Sarah.